It's comeback time on MasterChef. This is the last chance I've got. Searching for Britain's best amateur cook. I'm determined to win it this time. 136 contestants who all believe they have undiscovered talent. I desperately want another chance at this. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. The search is on for the last comeback contender. Tonight, eight previous contestants will battle it out for a place in the semi-finals. Last time they saw me cook OK, but not brilliantly, so I think I've got a lot to prove to the pair of them. I need to be Mr Nice Guy. I want to win it. I'm willing to open my heart and put it on a plate every single time I cook. I'm here to win MasterChef. I'm going to win MasterChef. They face four extreme challenges, testing their skill. I think it tastes really good, but it looks a fright. Palette. I can't tell you what the, the green herb is, sorry. Ability to cope under pressure. Steak overcooked, no good. And the precision of their own food. It is very sticky, it's very sweet. I think that's lovely. Only one can go through to face the other comeback winner, Mitra, in a head-to-head -head cook off for the remaining semi-final place. We saw potential in these guys last year, but now they have to prove to us they have the necessary skill to go further in the competition. How good have they become? Are they as good as the semi-finalists we have right now? We're about to find out. This the first test is a skill test. We want to see how good a cook you've really become. We're going to give you a choice. You can either cook for us duck with a spicy plum sauce and Asian noodles or kedgeri. We're going to give you 25 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, come up and make your choice, please. Eight comeback contestants have been given the ingredients, but no recipe. Kedri, my favourite one-pot wonder. Smoked fish, rice and the spice coming from curry powder. Boiled eggs cooked absolutely perfectly and finished off with lots of fresh herbs. Duck, spice plum sauce and Asian noodles. The duck has to be cooked perfectly and little bits of pink in the middle, the skin's still crispy. And there has to be glimmers of Asian flavours running through the noodles with that wonderful plum spicy sauce. Sharp enough to cut through the fat of the duck, but also sweet enough to be able to complement the saltiness in those noodles. What I'm surprised about is how many people went for Kedgeri. I think Kedgeri is really tough. I think the contestants perceive Kedgeri as the easier option because it's one pot cooking. No way, that Kedgeri will start to fall apart in the last five minutes when they realise either their rice is overcooked or it's undercooked. Last time, property developer James let himself down. The issue, of course, is going to be that by the time we hit the second mouthful, we've got no fish left and we're going to end up with a whole plate full of radish, celery, and gooseberries. I think I've ironed out a lot of the silly little mistakes. I've really tried very hard to get things a lot less fussy and a lot less uh, complicated. Back here for another crack? Yep. Why? I think I've got a bit more knowledge of food than I did have. It's still an important part of my life and still sort of a big thing that I get a lot of enjoyment out of. Science teacher Anna lost out to last year's champion, Matt Follis, but impressed with some of her food. Deliciously soft, sharp rhubarb. It don't get much better than that. The last year, we only really got to see one style of my cooking, which was the traditional English side, and I've got a lot more to offer. Why have you decided to come back? I want the experience, I want to work with some chefs so I get the skills that I need to develop, and I want my whole career to change, my life to change.
52-year-old IT consultant Paul impressed making his own pasta, but failed to get past the heats. I think your pasta's absolutely excellent. I do question using the ricotta. It does make it creamy, but it washes away some of the crab flavour. The reason why I've come back is because I, I feel as I didn't show my best and I want to have another go. Five minutes gone, you have 20 minutes left. Lebanese-born Elisa dreams of a restaurant specialising in Mediterranean cuisine. Last time, I think, I lost focus and I moved away from what I know best, which is authentic Mediterranean dishes. The pastry is too crumbly, the plums are not cooked enough. This, Elisa, is definitely not your best dish. Why have you come back? Well, the passion is stronger than ever and I, I will never have another opportunity like this and to get another opportunity is a blessing and I want to grab it. Thirty-one-year-old Cassandra works in food marketing and was knocked out last time in the quarter-finals. I have three great obsessions in my life. Shoes, handbags and food. Okay. How do you think you've improved specifically? Um, I've tried to go back to basics and then build from that rather than try and go all out to do crazy food. Fifty-two-year-old landscape gardener Ian learned to cook in the armed forces. I've been practicing this competition to the extent that my wife's actually put on half a stone of weight. <laughs> but he was guilty of combining too many ingredients. The idea of the cheese and the cream and the cherries and the venison is one. It's a bit unforgiving on your palate. OK. Ten minutes gone, 15 minutes left. Advertising director Nicole dreams of opening a restaurant in a vineyard. I just underestimated the pressures of being in the in the kitchen here and just the time that I would need to get everything just perfect, so I know that for this time. Last year, her food impressed, but presentation let her down. It was really delicious, but it didn't look great. Big smile, you seem very confident. Um, no, I'm terrified. I'm much more nervous this time than I was last time. It's a second chance, which is very unusual to get a second chance, so I'm, I'm really desperate to do well. 30-year-old painter and decorator Scott was narrowly defeated in the heats. It's a very well-balanced, very well-cooked, very, very delicious dish. Thanks very much. I've improved a lot. Hopefully that'll be enough um, to get me through. You have just five minutes left. Time's up. Stop. First up, it's food marketer Cassandra, who's chosen to make kedgeri. The rice is nice and soft. The egg is wonderfully cooked and perfectly runny on the inside. The whole thing could probably do with a little bit more seasoning. Right. Technically, you've cooked it all very well, but it's lacking spice. I'm pleased that they're impressed by my skill because um, I have tried to go back to basics in the last year. And so being able to cook fish well and do the eggs was, um, was important to me. Science teacher Anna has also gone for the kedgeri. Your fish is lovely and soft. It's full of spice, full of heat, well balanced, well seasoned, but the rice is undercooked. Wow, lovely. Loads and loads of heat. Slippery egg and soft fish, very nice, but that rice is hard. Yeah. The rice is going to just haunt me, basically, and it's something that I'm just going to have to live with. It's just such a stupid mistake that it's just... it's hard to describe, really. 
IT consultant Paul is one of only two contestants that have chosen to cook the duck noodles. Your plum sauce is quite vibrant and quite sharp. A little bit of sour note in the back of it, which is really good. But I can't really taste any flavourings in the noodles. It's OK, but I would have loved to have had, you know, something defined in that noodle, which really sort of made me think it was Asian. Yeah. I like that. Your duck is lovely and moist. That sauce has got spice and it's got a bit of sharpness and sweetness as well. Great. I'd be very, very upset if I went home now, and I believe I'm better than going out at this stage. Next, it's landscape gardener Ian, who's hoping his kedgeri will see him through to the next round. You get the little smokiness of the haddock, but the haddock is overcooked, the egg is not cooked enough. Uh, there's lots of mistakes on this plate, Ian. I'm picking up a bit of seasoning, but there is a real lack of spice in there. And you can tell with the colour. Yeah. I didn't show just how much I've come on in the past year. I mean, the egg itself was undercooked, and I'm totally gutted. Advertising director Nicole's dream of a vineyard restaurant now rests on her kedgeri. I think the rice should be cooked a little bit more, the fish a little bit less, and your egg definitely should be properly formed. Um, and it needs a good whack of seasoning to really bring it alive. Everything I cooked was just slightly off, and I think that's probably a lack of focus. I'll be absolutely gutted if I don't go through, to be honest. Property developer James is hoping to impress with his duck, spicy plum sauce, and Asian noodles. Although your duck is unevenly cooked, it's lovely and soft, and it's really well seasoned. I really like the sesame oil running through those noodles. I think it tastes really good. In fact, boring and delicious. But it looks a fright. The plate wasn't the prettiest plate in the world, but hopefully it did the job. Next, it's full-time mum, Elisa, who has also chosen to cook the kedgeri. Your rice is cooked beautifully. It's fragrant as a dish, it looks good, lots of things are right in there, but that fish is overcooked and it needs a little bit more spice. Okay. I'm quite pleased with you. Apart from the fish being slightly over, the rice is perfect, the egg is perfect, there is seasoning in there, we could do with a little bit more, but the pinches of chilli around the outside are very good indeed. I felt that I performed, you know, good enough, hopefully, to go through for the next stage. Finally, it's painter and decorator Scott. Your fish is overcooked, it's going a little dry. You have put so much salt in there, far too much salt in there. I know we always encourage you to season, but you've gone too far. The fish is slightly overcooked. The egg you had a real issue with. Scott, it's not the best of days, is it? No. Just disappointed with myself. Really disappointed with myself. I know I'm better than that, and it's not. I, I didn't come all this way for a year to get knocked out. I think that some of them have done very, very well, but a lot of them I don't think did as well as I expected. For me, it's pretty simple. If you cannot cook rice and you cannot boil an egg, you cannot go forward on MasterChef. I totally agree with you. The first person leaving us... ..is Scott. I didn't come here to take part, I come here to win. And um, it wasn't good enough at the end of the day. It wasn't, wasn't good enough. The second person leaving us is Ian.
on that performance, I wouldn't have put myself through either. Totally gutted. Just a missed opportunity. The third person to leave us. Nicole. I won't let it stop me cooking. I understand what I need to do to get better. I'll definitely keep cooking. I love food. As for the rest of you, you survive. Well done. Congratulations. We know you've got the skills, but now the question remains, do you have the palate? These five contestants have survived the skills test, but with only one semi-final place left to win, things are about to get a whole lot tougher. For today's palate test, I'm going to cook a Thai-flavoured lobster omelette. It is a very, very complex dish in its own right. It's uh, extraordinary in flavour, but there are lots of things in here that they should be able to pick up on. First, John starts on the classic lobster bisque sauce that will accompany the omelette. Take the tail off. We're going to keep the meat and we're going to put that inside the omelette. The claws and the rest of the body we're going to make our sauce from. I'm going to add to that normal basic stuff for, the, for a bisque. A couple of onions, tomatoes, some celery, some garlic. So there's our basic flavours. What is, do you think, besides the actual shellfish itself. The most predominant flavour in a beast, brandy. Absolutely. Really important. Way! Into that now we add our tomatoes. Lemongrass. Galangal. And here's the nice bit. A decent handful of star anise. And then it goes to water. After being reduced for two hours, the bisque is then strained. <laughs> With the bisque sauce made, John prepares the salad of Thai basil, Chinese chives, coriander, spring onions and pea shoots. Then he prepares the garnish that will also flavour the groundnut oil that the omelette is cooked in. Slice chilli, slice garlic and little tiny Thai shallots. So there's quite a lot of different, you know, variables. And they must be able to pick up chilli in this. You know, if they don't pick up chilli, then they might as well just go home. Right, all this goes into oil, which is only just warmed. When the garnish is ready, it's put to one side. These are our little fried garnishes. Mm. And they're all crispy. Uh, right, eggs. 12 eggs are beaten with palm sugar and fish sauce. They're then poured into the garlic, chilli and shallot flavoured oil. So now what's going to happen is that egg, in its little sort of weird state, you see it's starting to become a raft, and that's going to come all the way through. OK. So that jar drops onto here. The omelette is filled with lobster, crab, crayfish tails and pea shoots. It's then rolled and served on oyster sauce, topped with the Thai salad, lobster bisque sauce, and finally, the deep-fried garnish. The dish has a total of 21 ingredients. Lobster omelette and bisque dressing. Lovely. Huge amounts of flavours in here, but really, the things they should be picking up are those which are obvious about Thai food. Lemongrass, galangal, Thai basil, coriander, but amongst all that, of course, there's lobster. Well, let's get them in. First to put their palate to the test is science teacher Anna. John has prepared this dish. It's one of his favourite dishes. We want you to taste it, and then we want you to list as many ingredients and flavours as you can. I've made huge sacrifices to be here today. I got married in Italy and the morning after the wedding, nine o'clock, I left my guests and my husband to come here because that's how much it means to me. Right, would you like to read your list to us? Egg, holy basil, palm sugar, and definitely it is tofu, 
um, soy, chilli, fish sauce, crayfish, pea shoots, coriander, bean sprouts, spring onion, oyster sauce and shallot. Not bad at all. And uh, what was the cookery method used? I don't think there was any cooking involved in the sauce necessarily, apart from possibly to dissolve some palm sugar, maybe. And the omelette? You'd whisk the egg, you'd put it into a pan with some butter. The same way you would traditionally make an omelette? Yes. Anna, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm quite pleased with her. She, she got ingredients there I didn't think she would. But I'm also a little bit surprised she didn't get lobster. Yeah, yeah, a bit surprised. I want to stay in the competition so much. The thought of going home and not getting through to tomorrow and the next day and the next day, I would just be devastated. Food marketer Cassandra had a strong first round. Can she continue to impress? Tell us what it tastes of. Food is a massive part of my life. I grew up on a farm and I learned to cook with my grandmother when I was about four. You done? Um, so I think there's chilli and garlic in there, bean sprouts, omelette, spring onions. I think there's lobster. I wasn't sure whether it's crayfish, but I think it's lobster. Coriander, soy sauce, some fish sauce, and some five spice. I know there's some others in there, but I can't remember the names of some of them. Sorry. Thanks, Cassandra. Thanks. No glaring mistakes, but nothing that fills you full of confidence. Funny thing is, Cassandra's job is in food trends, and she didn't pick up the pea shoot. Well, she picked it up, she just didn't know what it was. And Thai basil in food trends? Really unsure about how I've done there. There's so many flavours packed into that, and I knew that I'd missed some of them out. And I just thought of another, I think there's probably ginger in there. So, oops. <laughs> oh, God. Full-time mum Elisa did well in the skills test, but does she have the palate? Could you read the list out to us? Uh, spring onions, eggs, dried chilli, holy basil, garlic, crayfish, pea shoots, bean sprouts, coriander, fish sauce, groundnut oil, maybe fish paste. Can you explain to us any cooking techniques? A small stir fry of shellfish placed inside the pancake, rolled and sliced, topped with coriander, pea shoots, holy basil and dried chilli and the scattering of the fried garlic. Liz, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Interesting, actually, because of all the ingredients that she got, two you can't see, fish sauce and granite oil. She's the only one who's actually picked up the flavour of the oil the omelette's been fried in. I think I did OK. I think I did OK. I was trying to concentrate on what I can see immediately and try to note it down before I even tasted it. I think I missed one or two ingredients. Now I'm thinking about it, but we'll see. Next up, it's property developer James. The last year since I was on Mars Chef, I've just been working very hard and trying to extend my knowledge of food a bit. Egg, crayfish, garlic, chilli, spring onion, coriander, lobster, crab, pea sprouts, Thai basil. I think the sauce might be made with the lobster or crab shells. Do you want to tell us how you think John may have put it together? I would have thought he made the omelette and then almost made like a salad with the seafoody bits and the dressing and put that in between the omelette and rolled it up. Thanks, James. Thank you. Cheers. He identified all the fish in there, and he identified the bisque being made from the shells. I really want to get thrown out, and if, that, if I've lost on that, I will be devastated. Last up is 52-year-old IT consultant Paul. I 
I think I'm pretty good at most things, but I believe that there's no one element that I'm perfect at. I'd like to be better at doing pasta, I'd like to be better at doing sauces. I'm not bad, but I think there's a lot of area for improvement. It's got soy sauce in it, bean sprouts, crab, chilli, there's a, a very thin omelette, bean shoots, crayfish tails, onion, basil, I think it's Chinese basil it's called, coriander, fish sauce and some garlic. And how do you think that was prepared? I suspect you make a, like a ragu and then make a very thin omelette, put the ingredients in and roll it up and then put the chilies and the, um, the rest of the, the bean sprouts around the outside. And the ragu? What's the ragu made from? The crab, the crayfish and uh, the onions. Paul, thank you very much. Off you go. Thank you. I'm disappointed he hasn't picked out anything aniseed, because that's big in there. Whether it comes from the star anise or the Thai basil. And what's he going on about, Ragu? What's he talking about? From my own estimate of how I did, I think I did fairly well, and therefore I'd like to think that they would be putting me through, but I, I, um, I've got my fingers crossed. This, the palate test, I think is a very, very interesting test. But the idea of it is not just to identify the ingredients, but actually to identify the tastes and the flavours as well. And this is where I think we separate the good cooks from those who are just looking down, trying to dissect a dish. Anna today came in here and talked about palm sugar, she talked about fish sauce, she talked about soy, she talked about lots of flavourings and not just about the things she could see on the plate. Let's have Anna in, John. She tasted properly. Elisa had a good attempt to at, uh, identify those ingredients. She identified some by sight, but some she identified by flavour. The fish sauce she got, and that's in the sauce. She didn't do badly at all. She knew what she was tasting. I think we should put Elisa in. We need to make a decision who is good enough to go through the next round? Paul, James or Cassandra? I like James because he identified all the shellfish and he understood that that bisque was made from lobster shells. But Cassandra at least pulled the whole thing apart and there was things like fish sauce and she was talking about the soy and the oyster sauce. She was picking up flavour notes. Paul didn't do bad. He listed ingredients as well as anybody else did. But he didn't understand what the taste of the dish was all about. In my mind, one of these has a little bit more potential. First person who's leaving us is Today was just one of those things that, you know, sometimes the luck of the draw goes with you and sometimes it doesn't. And I think today wasn't one of my fortes, really. The second person to leave us is Cassandra. It's disappointing to go out now, but I am proud in how much I developed over the last year. I did come in fighting and I did the best I could. For you three, congratulations. You'll be back here tomorrow. Well done. I'm really excited to call my husband and tell him that I'm through and that everything that we've sacrificed has been worth it. I'm feeling ecstatically happy. This is the beginning stage and this is the stage where I didn't want to come out. I can't wait. I can't wait for tomorrow and what tomorrow brings. It does mean a lot to me to see that they've obviously seen a bit of potential there, so it's nice to, uh, nice to get through against stiff competition. It's day two. James, Elisa and Anna arrive at Asia de Cuba, a Philippe Stark designed restaurant in the St. Martin's Lane Hotel. Today, they will be working under head chef Franz Schnagel. Good morning, I'm Franz. 
Morning. We've got 60 booked, okay, and uh, we can't afford any hiccups. It's very important that we get it right. Let's get to work. Come on. In service, full-time mum Elisa will be responsible for pan-seared tuna with wasabi mashed potatoes and chimichurri sauce. Newly married science teacher Anna will be making Alaskan black cod with Cuban black bean and edamame salad and tempura peppers. Property developer James is in charge of grilled strip steak with ginger chickpea fries and a melon slaw. It's 12 o'clock and as the restaurant fills, the orders roll in. Okay, check on. On order. Black cod. Yes, sir. Anna is the first to get an order. Her cod dish is delicate and can fall apart if it's not cooked carefully. Okay, what I'm waiting on is black cod, yeah? Yes, chef! Um, what happened here? It kind of looks like you had a taste of it already. So I don't think the customer is going to be very impressed, okay? He pays for a full piece, Should he wants a full again? piece. Redo, okay? Okay, order fire me a steak medium, okay? Yes, chef. James's grilled beef steak has to be cooked perfectly to order. How are we doing on that medium steak? Two minutes, chef. Two minutes? Thank you. Timings are crucial. OK, you've got one minute left on your two minutes, yeah? Yeah, that'll be ready, chef. You sure it's medium? A bit longer. Still quite raw. Give it a bit more. OK. Timing wasn't particularly good. I thought I'd get it out without any problems. It just was a bit trickier, but I'm sure I'll get it. Only need to be told once. Okay, order fire, black or tuna. Yes, yes, sir. Elisa's tuna needs to be evenly seared, and her wasabi mash must be heated through at the last minute. Tuna looks beautiful. Thank you, chef. But the mesh is cold. Reheat the mesh, please. I heated it up, must have, by the time I plated it, it got cold. I'm quite disappointed. It's halfway through service. The restaurant is busy and the pressure is mounting. Order, tuna. Yes, chef. Steak medium rare. Yes, chef. And a black cod. Yes, chef. Steak overcooked? No good. Sorry, chef. You want steak behind now, yeah? So get the next steak on. Chef. And send me this one out now, yeah? Okay, chef. I'm falling a bit behind. We won't get it wrong again. And James isn't the only one with timing issues. So you're falling behind on the tuna, so I really need to get the tuna now. 50 seconds, chef. The waiter just came up to me. The customer is getting really, really disappointed, yeah? 30 seconds, chef. OK, I'm getting quite desperate. Tuna's up, chef. One tuna, chef. Tuna looks great, and it tastes great as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Next time from the beginning like that, yeah? Yes, Chef. After breaking her expensive black cod, Anna's next dish has to be spot on. OK, I've got the steak on the pass. How far is the black cod away? It's coming, Chef. Nicely cooked, a full piece. Yep. Perfect, thank you. I need the steak now. Just there, chef. With service coming to an end, James has one last chance to deliver a perfectly cooked steak. How is it cooked? Looks fine. That's a great medium rare steak. Thank you, chef. Thank you, nice plate. Thank you, chef. Service. That's it, ladies and James, you're finished for the day. Yes, chef, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much.
the dishes I was waiting the longest was the tuna. But otherwise, um, when the plate came, it was pretty much spot on every single time, except the one when um, the mesh was cold. So she did it well, but too slow. I'm learning every single time, and especially when you're a professional kitchen, you pick up so many things. James, I'm a bit disappointed with him because cooking taste is difficult, but he made it sometimes look a bit more difficult than it actually is. I wish it had gone better. I wish it had all fallen into place a little bit more, but, you know, I've got to learn from your mistakes and I've made a few today. I think, Dana, the fish was just perfect. The plating was spot on and it looked really good. She had really nice colour on the fish as well. I've proved that I can cook and handle the pressure, so I'm happy. These three comeback contestants have survived the gruelling professional, skill and palate tests. But before they can walk away a winner, they have to cook their very best two courses. Your own two dishes, one hour, let's cook. For her two courses, full-time mum Elisa is cooking her grandmother's recipe of kafta patties, followed by a custard dessert trio. Why have you decided right now to give us dishes that you've loved since a child? Last time I know where I went wrong. I tried to create dishes that included tastes that I'm not too familiar with, and I lost all my confidence. This time I have the full confidence with what I'm cooking. I've been cooking it all through my life, and I hope you'll get to enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed eating it. Elisa, it's interesting, watching you work, today is the first time I've seen you properly nervous. And, and it's just a dream. It's a dream that you know, I've carried all through my life, and this is the opportunity to make that dream come true. Elisa is cooking food which is really close to her heart. That sounds delicious, but can it look beautiful? Property developer James struggled in the pro kitchen. Now his last chance to stay in the competition rests on pistachio-crusted lamb with vegetables and a plum tart tatin. A year since we saw you last. Yep. How do you think your food has changed in that 12 months? Um. I don't feel I need to put as many things on a plate to make a good plate of food. I don't feel I need to overcomplicate things to show what I can do. Is there a danger that you might be given us something we may have seen many times before? So, yeah. But it's good food, it's well presented, nice to eat, nice to look at. And hopefully I uh, tick a few of the boxes I haven't ticked so far. And if you go through to the next round today, how are you going to feel? Very happy, man. Good luck. Thanks, yeah. James. James is doing European classics. If he can pull it off, he is worthy of another round. Ladies and gentlemen, you have 10 minutes left. Science teacher Anna dreams of a family-run restaurant. Her next two courses of Indian tali, sweet rice and chapati, followed by a ginger creme brulee, will have to be faultless if she's to progress any further. We are used to Anna, who is very British, very big, very rustic. Where are we going with this? I thought I'd show you a different side. I thought it would be safe to come in with an English menu. And obviously there's higher expectations this time around. So I thought we've got to go for it, got to go for broke. Anna, you've given up a lot to come back to Indeed, Chef. yeah. What have you given up? My honeymoon, uh, spending time with my husband and my guests the day after our wedding. So they were all waving me off, throwing confetti as I left for the airport and left them all to it. But this makes me happy, I love cooking. I love the way your food can make other people, do you know what I mean, how it makes them feel. Anna, good luck. Thank you. I think Anna's been really brave. She's throwing down a trump card. Does she have the deft hand to be able to take all those spices and make them come alive? Because it's a big ask. Just got two minutes left, two minutes. That's it. Time's up.
Elisa has made kafta patties with potatoes, peppers, onions and tomato jus, followed by pancakes filled with custard cream topped with pistachio and candied blossoms, custard cream on honey and a custard cream phyllo stack. I really like the idea of it. I really like the tomato and the peppers and the meat. I just wish I could taste those potatoes all falling apart because then I think it would have been a beautiful dish. Yeah, you're right. Meatiness, sweetness, richness tastes great. From your kuftas, I think it looks really special. I really like it. I think it's really, really interesting and really delicious. It is very sticky. It's very sweet. It appeals to somebody like me with a sweet tooth. I've never tasted that before. I think that's lovely. Good. Property developer James has made pistachio-crusted lamb on spinach with carrots, peas and broad beans followed by a plum tart tatin and clotted cream. We obviously have a problem because we've got undercooked lamb. Yes. I can't slice into that uh, and eat raw lamb. Uh, I will try a bit off the other side. OK. The bit that's cooked is just lovely. I mean, it's moist and it's well seasoned, but most of that lamb is raw. I really, really love the taste of that pistachio crust and the spinach with the carrots. I think all of it but your lamb is cooked very, very well. That's the lamb. Plum ta ta tan. That's good. That's really good. The plums are a little bit sharp, but sweet, not too sweet. And that clotted cream on the top makes it all very, very yummy indeed. Thank you. I get this really fantastic, rich aniseed from that star anise. Sour, but sweet plums, buttery soft. I think the way that tastes is fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic. Anna is hoping to impress with her Indian tali of chicken stew, spiced lamb chops, chapati and sweet rice, followed by a ginger creme brulee with cardamom shortbread. I think those lamb cutlets are really tasty, really delicious. Love the sweet rice and I like the chewiness that comes from that chapati. Your chicken stew, hmm, it's nice but it doesn't have a lot of depth. Eaten together like that as a little picnic, the whole thing is lovely, lovely. From your tali to your ginger brulee and Indian shortbread. Unfortunately, your brulee is overcooked and gone a little bit sloppy, and instead of it being a baked custard, it's, it's sort of a bit watery. Right. But the flavour is fantastic. And then these little biscuits, with their seeds in them, and the semolina flour and all the sugar, are soft, lovely, beautifully made. Huge amounts of skill in here. Really, really well thought out. I really like the dish, and it's a real shame for you that the, the brulee's overcooked. Yeah. Our three amateurs have had 12 months in which time to improve and they have all come a very, very long way. I think that all three of them put in huge amounts of effort and all of them cooked from the heart. I feel a little bit sorry for James. The fact is, with James today, he didn't cook his meat properly. The star of that show, for me, were the vegetables and they should have been a great accompaniment to a wonderfully moist piece of lamb. I really liked his plum ta-ta-ta and it's the balance of sweetness and sharpness that he got absolutely right. I don't know if I've done enough. I don't know if John and Greg can perhaps see past the, the, 
the very, very silly error of the lamb. Anna's three pots uh, on the plate with the chapatis looked unusual. Actually, I really enjoyed it. I thought that was really good tasting, highly spiced food. She's driven. She really wants this. She put in a huge amount of effort. And it tastes good in certain parts for me. But that chicken need a lot more time to really cook down and become big and rich. After that, I found myself a bit disappointed by her pudding. I thought it tasted great, but her brulee was overcooked and gone sloppy. I don't just want to go and it through to the next round. I want to go absolutely all the way. And I think going in today, being focused, hopefully showing them that I am very, very determined to do well in the competition. Elisa decided to cook us a kofta dish inspired by her grandmother's cookbook. The potatoes were not quite cooked enough and that meant we didn't really get the earthiness that we needed from that dish. I thought Elisa's uh, stew was yummy. Meatiness, sweetness, really good. Good dish, not quite right. Pudding, completely different matter. Three variations around one theme. All those different textures I thought was fantastic. I really want to go through the next round. I just hope that the presentation and the potatoes for my main course don't stop me from, from going through. The fact is that either one of them could do well in the next round, but how well could they do with the rest of the competition? That's the question. I think the decision today is tough, tough, tough. person going through is Elisa. Congratulations. I'm pleased. I'm so pleased. I'm happy. It was a hard day. I was up against it. But yeah, I should have been able to cook a lamb chop really, so... Silly boy. It has been good having to come back. Obviously, I'm, I'm disappointed, but I will still be cooking. Wow. My heart is in my throat. I can't believe it. <laughs> to hear my name is amazing. It's something that my whole family is going to be proud of. of 16 comeback contestants, only the two best remain. Soon the semi-finals begin, but only one of these great cooks can go through. We already have seven extremely talented semi-finalists. I mean, cooks of the highest order. We want to see if you are able to cook as well as them. This is the ultimate invention test. One dish, one hour, one semi-final place. Let's cook. To survive, Mitra and Elisa have to produce their very best dish from a table of ingredients including venison, rabbit, black cabbage, artichokes, eggs, cherries, carrots, chocolate, potatoes and black pudding. Psychology student Mitra has produced some incredible food. You have the nicest, creamiest sauce in the room. The fritters are delicious. And if he wasn't here, I'd eat the whole lot. Today, she's making a cherry clafouti but will it be enough to make her a winner? How many clafoutis have you made in the past? Um, I think I've made one once, but it's following a recipe, so I am taking a bit of a risk. You seem to be a completely changed person. You've gone from being an absolute nervous wreck to somebody very, very confident. I just thought that if I let my nerves take me over today, I knew I'd go home, so I had to go one way or the other. And this year, I want to enjoy it, and I know it's my last chance, so I have to do my best. 
she is promising us a classic, classic dessert. Nowhere to hide. Does she have that skill? You never know. You are halfway. You have 30 minutes left. Elisa is making venison with roasted vegetables, black cabbage and an artichoke fricassee. Today, you have to really fight, don't you, for your place? This is a very important stage for me. This is the stage where I left last time and I'm intending not to leave this time. To lose, the dream will stop here. I don't think I'll, I'll have another opportunity like this. What's the hardest thing about this test? Uh, if you try something that you haven't done before, I think you won't be successful. I've never cooked venison, but I believe I somehow can judge how to cook it. You have never cooked venison before and now fighting for a semi-final place, you've decided to cook venison. I believe I can cook it right. I've cooked racks of lamb many, many times and um, I will give it a go. She's taking a massive risk. She's cooking venison and she's never cooked venison before. She's got shallots in with the cabbage, plenty of butter. She's got lots of seasoning. She's got fresh thyme going in with the vegetables. If anyone can deliver flavour, it's her. You have just five minutes to go, five minutes left. That's it, time's up. Elisa has made venison with roasted vegetables, black cabbage and an artichoke fricassee. That looks great. That looks really, really good. I, I, honestly, I'm really impressed. The taste of your vegetables is magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. But the venison that you've never cooked before is well undercooked. I think that is absolutely divine. But because the taste of the vegetables is so big, it's very difficult to even taste the venison. I, I realise what went wrong, but overall I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with myself at the attempt that I made today. How much do you want that semi-final place? More than ever. You know, it, mean, it means I never wanted anything more in my life. Mitra's dish is a cherry clafouti with raspberry coulis and chantilly cream. A classic clafouti without a recipe. That is risky. That's lovely. That is really, really yummy. Somehow or another, Mitra, you have pulled it off. Your food is delicious. Your food looks messy. I have a bit of an issue with this. Because I think, with the amount of time that you had today, you had the ability to actually plate this up in a number of different ways. I know it looks rubbish, but I'm glad you like it. I didn't think you would. How much do you want this semi-final place? Just unbelievably want it. I would hate to go and not be able to show you more in the semi-finals. I think they're both amazing. They overachieved today. Elisa. She'd never cooked venison before, so it was always risky when she chose it. But those veg, John, really have, have I tasted veg as good as that. Wonderful to see somebody take such great care with vegetables. And Elisa today took some artichokes, some carrots, some shallots, some black cabbage and turned it into something truly beautiful. Unfortunately, I concentrated too much on the vegetables and not so much on the meat, and, and that showed in the results. But overall, I'm quite pleased with myself. I'm so impressed with Mitra, really, really impressed. The taste of Mitra's food, the delivery once it gets inside your mouth is wow. But you look down on it and you do wonder about the care. The issue comes in the fact of the way in which she's presenting her food. She couldn't make it look smart, she couldn't make it look elegant. And actually she had, she had more than enough time in her hands to play with it. But it tasted lovely.
I knew it looked rubbish and I just had to get over that. Um, I'm really glad it tasted good, but I'm just not confident I've done enough to get through. I don't know how we're going to choose between these two. I think we've got two exceptional cooks. Both of them serve up absolutely delicious food. Both hugely talented cooks, both worked really hard for the last 12 months and it shows. Great food, great food, great food. seen huge improvement in both of you since last year. Well done. Really tough decision. Our semi-finalist. Is Mitra. Congratulations. From last year to this year, I've made such a big improvement, and that in itself is making me very proud of myself. I'm disappointed, but I believe I've made a good effort. I've given it a good try, and most of all, I've enjoyed it. Congratulations. Thank you. Semi finalist. Great dish. Well done. The gamble paid off. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so happy. Like, it's just, I just can't believe it. It's just not really settled in yet. I'm absolutely over the moon. Now I'm in the semis, all I can do is think about trying to get to the final. I'm going to give it all I've got. Mitra is the last of our semi-finalists. We have eight very skilled, gifted cooks. Let's see what happens when they all line up against each other. Next time, the battle commences. The eight semi-finalists return to cook for their MasterChef lives. Technically, absolutely brilliant. It looks fantastic. The pasta is showing some skill, but I, I don't think it belongs on that plate. Only the very best will survive. 